<laughs> okay. So shall we begin now with uh, with troll falls? I hope you are ready with your book. I am not only to give the final true or false, but I will be discussing why true, why false, no? Especially false, why false, and uh, cite whatever page, kinahanglan, that you will be referring to in your book. Okay, any question? Let's now begin with number one. Okay, when two entities competing in the same industry combine, it is called horizontal business combination. Okay, so the answer is true. Okay. Uh, you may uh, continue by uh, just copying. Two, horizontal business combinations are likely to occur when management is attempting to dominate a geographic segment of the market. Now, why is it false? The answer is false. Why is it false? Now, uh, management Normally. is not only attempting to dominate geographic segment, but it attempts to dominate an industry or the industry. So that makes the statement false. Three, one way that a horizontal business combination can increase sales for an entity is to expand into new product markets. True, we are still talking about combination. Four, a vertical business combination generally involves companies attempting to improve the efficiency of operations by purchasing suppliers of inputs or purchases of outputs. Now, the answer is true because in vertical integration it is uh, related to uh, acquisition of supplier supplier no or customer so it may be acquisition of a supplier or a customer so it's either it's still vertical integration five when a retail clothing store purchases a competitor in another city, a vertical combination has occurred. It's false because this is horizontal uh, combination. Six, a vertical combination is one where the entities have a potential buyer-seller relationship. Uh, true, that's in relation to number four. Next, seven. A business combination in which a supplier of raw materials is acquired is a conglomerate combination. False. This is vertical. Eight. A conglomerate combination is often undertaken to help increase income stability due to diversifying the asset base of an entity. So true because uh, diversification uh, usually is a conglomerate combination. Nine, conglomerate combinations are easy for the government to challenge in court. Okay? Uh, challenge in court. True because of unrelated industries in conglomerate combinations next 10 if negotiation management what, group leads to a mutually agreeable business combination the process is called a friendly takeover uh, it may be 
uh, acquisition of a two-thirds or uh, three-fourths positive vote, no? So, uh, number 10 is true, okay? 11, an offer by an acquirer to buy the stock of another company is commonly called a tender offer. True. 12, a tender offer that is opposed by the acquiry management is called a hostile bid. Hostile or hostile? How do you pronounce it? Hostile or hostile? Huh? Different schools, different pronunciations, ma'am. Hostile. Hostile. So it's uh, considered to be a tender offer. However, there is a hostile uh, bid to the extent that uh, the tender offer now results to an unfriendly uh, combination. Uh, 12 is true. 13, green mail exists when a company is encouraged to buy a potential acquiry. Green mail exists when a company is encouraged to buy a potential uh, acquiry. Now the answer is false. Green mail is the payment of a price above the market value to acquire stock back from a potential acquirer. So it's the payment. Now I hope you have already read the meaning of green mail in the book. It's a payment of a price above market value to acquire stock back from a potential acquirer. So it makes the statement false. 14. A poison pill is ma the term used to describe the issue one. Ma'am, Crisero. Yes. Yes. Ma'am, um, kay Ari, nakita ma'am sa may green mail, ma'am. Ma'am, kot lang ko tani. Because I, ay, ano, ma do may confusion ko, ma'am. Ma ano ang difference? I'm referring to question number 13. That's, uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, number 13. Okay? And number 13 is Opo, green mail. Ang question ko, ma'am. Oo. Oh, oh. Yes. Yes. Ma'am, ang question ko. What's your question? Defensive maneuvers. Gusto ko tani ask ma'am. Oh. Kung ano ang difference ng green mail sa shark repellent. Sa shark repellent. Kay nga ah. Sa green mail. Yes ma'am. mo. Kay both of them are ano. Ah, uh, puro na sila ano maneuver. Sa green mail. Uh, the acquisition of common stock presently owned by the prospective acquirer. So, at a price lower in excess of the prospective acquirer's cost. So, acquire the stock which was originally owned by the prospective acquirer. Price lower. So, in that case, the stock now is placed in the treasury. Who will be the one reacquiring? It's the potential acquirer. Acquiry. Now, on the other hand, the shark repellent is still an acquisition of substantial amounts of outstanding common stock for the treasury or for the retirement or the incurring of substantial long-term debt and exchange for outstanding common stock. I think the difference between the two is in green mail, the price is substantially lower than the uh, original cost since uh, it's a treasury stock in both cases. In uh, green mail, the price is substantially lower which is not the case in shark repellent and that in shark repellent you still involve 
incurring of substantial long-term debt uh, in exchange for the outstanding common stock. While in the case of uh, grain mail, it's purely on the treasury stock. However, as we can see it, sa green mail, considering the price paid, which is lower, that may result to an expect, uh, expensive excise tax. So, wala inang hey, ma shark repellent. Okay. Pero ma'am, ang ano ma'am, ang makuha, ang mabay, ang ma-acquire sang stocks, si acquire na siya on both. Si, kay nga, Bali, ha? Ang si, si ma-treasury stock, kung mag-treasury stock, sin o bala ang nag acquire sang treasury stock, kundi ang company nga nag-issue nag sina. So kung maghambal ka nga, uh, according to the statement, and are then held as treasury stock or retired. So, who, who reacquires treasury stock or who retires the treasury stock, whether it's a green mail or a shark repellent, normally, it's the company who issued. It's the company nga nag-issue, siya man ang ma-reacquire. So, actually, the ones reacquiring, i ang imo nga company nga nag-own sina initially for the shares outstanding to be reduced. So, amo na ang iyadira nga effect. So, as you can see it, uh, actually, who reacquires treasury stock is the company itself. Pero ma'am, between the acquiry and the acquirer, since both man sila nga daan company that issues stocks, sino sa ila ma'am ang nagbakal, Kaya, ang nag-ano, nag-purchase ang treasury shares? Green mail exists when a company is encouraged to buy a potential acquiry. To buy a potential acquiry. But before it buys a potential uh, acquiry, ma acquire siya na isang treasury stock. Now, anong imong question dira? Sino ang nagbakal sa treasury stocks? Sa treasury stock. Kaya bal Kay both na, had, uh, substantial yes. amounts of outstanding common stock for the treasury or for the retirement or the incurring of substantial long-term debt in exchange for outstanding common stock. So in that connection, uh, initially, it is the acquirer nga nagabakal sang treasury stock. So ano ang objective niya nga ang i-reacquire ang treasury stock? Kaya nga, uh, balya dire, uh, acquisition of common stock presently owned by the prospective acquiring company at a price substantially lower in excess of the prospective acquirer's cost with the stock thus placed in the treasury. The purchased shares are then held as treasury or retired, where the tactic is largely ineffective because it may result to uh, uh, bigger excise tax or in the accounting perspective, the excess of the price paid over the market price is expense. So, initially, the, the party acquiring the treasury stock is the acquirer. Kay iya nga stock, i-reacquired ya, so maging in treasury. But, what is the purpose of the acquirer? Why it will acquire Yes. Treasury stock. And take note that Treasury stock uh, reacquired will be for reissuance. Iriissue ya sa acquiry. Iriissue ya sa acquiry. So this time, Dali, ma ang ginapanumdum ko, oh, oh. ang ginapanumdum ko, ma'am, if, if it is the acquirer who will purchase or reacquire ang ilang uh, Treasury shares, Tinga asya naging defensive mechanism, ma'am. 
kay di ba ang defensive maneuvers nga ni is applicable for those acquiry para hindi sila ma-acquire. Kumbaga these are defenses of the acquiry. Defensive so, tactics si acquire, or moves. Kay ang naga okay, ang naga block dira nga hindi ya ma ma take over nga hindi maka take over amo ang acquiry hindi bala yes kay iya niya yes, nga mga iya niya nga mga defense mechanisms sang acquiry nga para nga hindi maka take over ang ang acquirer ti karon kun ang nagbakal sang uh, sang stocks is it possible that the acquirer will be the one to buy the stocks at a cheaper price paano ya mabakal kundi ang situation amo niyo ang acquirer may iya na nga daan nga nga stockholders or shareholders equity with number of shares outstanding or with number of shares outstanding so what will happen is it possible that the acquiry will be the one to buy the shares of the acquirer is it possible that the acquiry will be the one to or will be the one to reacquire reacquire the shares of the acquirer or is it really the acquirer reacquiring the shares for the purpose of selling the shares to the acquiry at a higher price. Kaya ang iyang purpose diri nga i-hold ya anay in treasury. And the fact that it is buying the shares at lower prices. May mga initial nga may mga initial nga shareholders. Di ang mga initial shareholders baklon ni acquirer ang shares sang initial nga shareholders so is it possible the point there is is it possible for the acquiry to buy the shares which are outstanding in the books of the acquirer is it possible that the acquiry will be the one to buy and call the shares uh, in treasury when the acquiry is just waiting to be acquired by the by the acquirer. So, amo na ang point nila. Who is reacquiring the treasury shares? Is it possible that the acquiry is the one? Now, actually, we call this uh, unfriendly takeover. And the following are the following defensive tactics or moves to resist the proposed business combination with the following colorful designations. So, in that case, if we consider the side of the acquiry, now the only question is, is it possible for the acquiry to reacquire the treasury shares or the shares originally owned by the acquirer. Pwede na? Ano ang point mo, Dira? Okay. Ako man ang, ano, uh, what I'm thinking of is ba si, ano, ba si after no. or during the combination, ba ba si after na sang combination nag-resist si acquiry, for example, in the case of acquisition, business combination, pero nag-exchange sila sang shares, ba si amo na ma'am nga si acquirer ang nagbakal sang iya nga shares nga ginhatag balaliwat kay acquirer at a lower price so mini initially si there was initially there was already the acquisition that's what you mean there there so, was the acquisition uh, by the acquirer <laughs> of the acquiry amo na kaya balya acquisition of common stock presently owned by the prospective acquiring company at a price substantially lower in excess of the prospective acquirer's cost. So, who will buy the shares? Is it the acquiry? Because when we talk about acquiry, the acquiry is the one being uh, taken or being acquired. 
So, how can the acquire acquire the shares? Paano yung backlog ng shares nga iyan ni acquire and call it in treasury? Or kasi hindi man gin siya, ma'am. Kaya do if if si acquire ang mag-acquire shares ni acquirer, do Pacman defense na siya. So, sino ang nag-acquire ng treasury shares? Hindi ko sure, ma'am. Acquire si acquire paano paano tipo maghambal ka nga di acquire di acquire acquires the treasury shares which are owned by the prospective acquiring company and call it treasury stock or retired stock so what what will be the entry of the acquire in that connection does the acquire have the right to debit to treasury stock or i-debit ng treasury stock because of the acquisition. But to think about the shark repellent, it's an acquisition of substantial amounts of outstanding common stock for the treasury again or for retirement or the incurring of substantial long-term debt in exchange for outstanding common stock. So, you can see the point, puro sila treasury stock. Ang imo lang dahil pamangkot, how come that the acquirer will reacquire the treasury stock? And how come that you call this defensive maneuvers on the part of the acquiree? Kaya nga, Kwairi, amo yes, ang naga, nagarisit. <laughs> Or is it possible nga ang Kwairi, may iya man siya nga defensive nga maneuver? Ang Kwairi? In order to sell the shares at a higher price and earn uh, a bigger amount of APIC. O, oh, sige. Masi, masi. Uh, can we continue discussing so, on this too uh, again? I uh, give the enough okay, time at least. We think of possibilities. Kay man stack up kita dere. Okay na Gabriel? Yes, can, can we continue and probably just yes, uh, put a mark on this uh, this green mm -hmm. mail and uh, we have the shark repellent. In what number are okay, we ma. now? Number 14. Uh, so number 13 is false. Company is encouraged to buy a potential acquiry. It's not. How about 14? How about 14? A poison pill is the term used to describe the issuance of a special kind of convertible preferred stock to defer the acquisition of the company. So, to number 14, the answer is if uh, there, on the part of the acquiry, acquiry, there will be an amendment of the articles of incorporation to make it more difficult to obtain the approval of the existing stockholders for the acquisition. Actually, uh, ang defense uh, mechanism is that of the acquiry. So, since the acquiry now is uh, resisting not to uh, have the acquisition, so prior to the acquisition, it will amend the articles of incorporation. And in that amendment of the Articles of Incorporation, there will be statements that will not allow an acquisition by the acquirer or it will be difficult for the stockholders, no? Or it will be difficult for the company uh, to obtain approval from the stockholders to approve the the acquisition so in other words the the uh, maneuver is really with the acquiree 
that if it's going to amend the Articles of Incorporation, then it will be uh, having statements that will be difficult for uh, the, the corporation to obtain approval from the stockholders to uh, continue with the acquisition. So number 14 is uh, false. False. 15. The sale of the crown jewels defensive maneuver involves the sale of the of more assets than does a scorched earth defense. So it involves the sale of more assets than does scorched earth defense. So the sale of valuable assets. The sale of valuable assets to outside parties, that would mean crown jewels. The sale of large amounts of assets, uh, that would mean scorch. Uh, you know the uh, the uh, tactic of the supposed to be acquiry, that before the acquisition, the acquiry will be selling some valuable assets or will be selling large amounts of assets so that the assets that will remain are the smaller ones or not so valuable assets so that when the acquiring company will already uh, acquire there are few assets left so the possibility that the supposed to be acquiring company will not continue with the acquisition. So again, the maneuver the part of the acquiry. So the answer to number 15 is false. 16. Ma'am? Yes. Ma'am? Oh. Ma'am, bali ang sa 15, because you mentioned, ma'am, that scorched earth involves large amount of assets. Bali, kung sulion sila, true na siya. Ang um, kay ibalaan mong question, the sale of the crown jewels defensive maneuver involves the sale of more assets than does scorch. So you are comparing the two mechanisms. And uh, okay, why the answer is false? Because, because the crown jewels uh, maneuver involves not more assets, valuable. not really more. Kaya nga, ah, kung mag-crown jewels ka, sale of valuable assets. Kung mag-scorch earth defense ka, sale of large amounts of assets. So, large amounts ang isa, valuable assets, which may also mean large amounts. So, actually, what makes the statement false is uh, the sale of more assets. The sale of more assets. So in other words, when you talk about sale of valuable assets and sale of uh, large amounts of assets, they are just no parihulan. So one is not so uh, superior as compared to the other. So that's why I've said that what made this statement uh, false is uh, the word of more assets, the sale of more assets. Okay na? Thank you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, thank you. 16, the fat man. Uh, actually, this fat man, amoni ang akong ginaproblemahan. Uh, actually, you cannot see this in the list. The fat man defensive maneuver involved the acquisition of assets by the potential acquiree. The fat man defensive involved the acquisition of assets by the potential acquiree. Whose assets will be acquired? Whose assets will be acquired? Actually, the potential acquiree uh, owns the assets. So, 
who will acquire the assets, the potential acquiry. Uh, involve the acquisition of assets by the potential acquiry. So before uh, the uh, supposed to be acquisition, the potential acquiry will also buy the assets, no? acquire the assets by the potential acquiry. Then why do we call it Fatman? Why do we call it Fatman? And uh, the Fatman, the other one is the Pacman. Okay? The Fatman defensive maneuver involves involve the acquisition of assets by the potential acquiry. Whose assets are acquired are actually the assets of the acquiry. Whose uh, who is supposed to be acquired by the acquirer. So what happened is just like your uh, crown jewels. And uh, the answer here is true because fat man meaning that the uh, acquirer or the one buying the assets really has money. 17. Golden parachutes give a bonus to all employees if the company is acquired. Is that true or false? Golden parachutes. Have false. you found the term? Have you found the term in the book? Golden parachutes. Have you found the term in the book? Huh? Oh, Class, have oh. you found the term in the book? Golden parachutes. Have you have you found the term? No, um, May nakita no, mo na nga golden golden parachutes. Anybody? Anybody who has uh, found Hola, the, the term? Have you found? Ha? No, ma internet only. <laughs> ano? The internet lang, ma'am. <laughs> oh, oh. So, what? who will receive the bonus? If there will be acquisition, who will be given the bonus in case of golden parachutes? Executive. Who will give? Will all the employees receive the bonus? Or not all? Oh. Huh? Who will not receive all. the bonus? Anybody who knows? The company executives. Only the company executives. So not all the employees. That's why the answer is false. So number 17. What made this false is all employees. 18. The Pac-Man defensive maneuver is where a potential acquiry attempts to purchase the acquirers, uh, the acquirer. So in other words, uh, the, the potential acquiry, instead of being acquired by the acquirer, it attempts to, to buy the acquirer. So in other words, it will buy the acquirer so that the acquirer will not buy it. So what uh, defensive maneuver is that? It's the Pac-Man. So 18 is true. 19. A business combination occurs when one entity gains control over the net assets of another entity. True. 20. The only way to obtain control over the net assets of another entity is to purchase the net assets. The only way to obtain control over the net assets of another company is to purchase the net assets, uh, which is false, which is false because uh, it may also be by purchasing the acquiries voting common stock that represents ownership of the assets. So why is it false? Because it may also be done 
by purchasing the Aquarius Voting Common Stock that represents ownership of the asset. 20 is false. 21. 21. In an acquisition where the Aquarius pays cash for the Aquarius assets, the book value of the acquirer increases. In an acquisition where the acquirer pays cash for the acquiries assets, the book value of the acquirer increases. Now the answer is false. Amount of cash is equal to the net assets of the acquirer. Okay, the amount of cash is equal to the net assets. So, or the book value is still the same. The book value of the acquirer. So, we now have number 21 as false. Wala ka klase eh. Wala ka klase eh. Ha? Ate, balik lang ka lang. Abay. Next, number 22. 22. In an acquisition of assets or for assets, the ownership structure of the acquiry does not change. In an acquisition of assets for assets, the ownership structure of the owner of the acquiry does not change. True. 23. In an acquisition of assets for assets, the ownership structure of the acquirer changes. No, because there is no exchange of stock. So number 23 is false. 24, there is an increase in the total capitalization of an acquirer when the acquirer issues stock for acquiring assets. True. If the acquirer issues stock. 25, in an exchange of stock, uh, acquirer for assets acquiry the ownership structure of the acquiry does not change again through 26 in an exchange of stock by the acquirer for assets of the acquiry the acquiry stockholders become acquirer so false the acquiry corporation becomes an acquirer stockholder, not the acquired stockholder. So the answer to number 26 is false. 27, control over the acquired assets is directly achieved in an asset for asset exchange, but indirectly achieved in an asset acquirer for stock acquiry exchange. True. 28. A business combination that occurs where only one of the original entities in existence after the combination is called statutory consolidation. It's false because it's statutory merger. 29. The acquiring entity is liquidated in a statutory merger. True. 30. For a business combination to qualify as a statutory consolidation, a new corporation must be formed. Uh, true. 31. In a statutory consolidation form of business combination, the retained earnings of uh, the retained earnings account of the newly formed corporation has a balance of zero immediately after the combination. So, false because stockholders' equity of one entity controlling the other, uh, the other, no? The retained earnings of the acquiring entity is carried forward to the new entity. So, it cannot be zero. The balance of the retained earnings 
is the retained earnings balance of the acquiring company. 32. After completing a business combination in the form of statutory merger or consolidation, there is only one legal entity in existence. True. 33. In a business combination accomplished as a stock acquisition, normally two companies exist after the combination. Uh, true. 34. A business combination accomplished as a stock acquisition must be accomplished with a stock for stock exchange. Uh, false because the stock of the acquiry must be purchased by the acquirer, but the value transferred to the acquiry stockholders does not have to be in stocks. So the stock of the acquiry must be purchased by the acquirer, but the value transferred to the acquiry stockholders does not have to be in stocks. Uh, 35. A stock acquisition uh, is the only form of business combination that might require the preparation of consolidated financial statements. True. 36. The substance of statutory mergers statutory consolidation and stock acquisitions is the same if income tax considerations are ignored. True. 37. There are uncertainties when two companies agree on a business combination. So when two companies agree on a business uh, combination. There are uh, uncertainties. The consideration nga uh, ihatag sang acquirer is sometimes not completely known because sometimes this is based partially on the future earnings of the acquiry or the market value of the acquired debt or stock. So number 37 is false. There are no uncertainties. False. There are because the consideration to be given by the acquirer is sometimes not completely known because this may be based partially on the acquiries, future earnings, or the market value of the acquired debt or stock. 38. When the acquisition price of an acquiry is contingent on acquiry's future earnings, the acquisition price may change. True. When the acquisition price of an acquiry is contingent on the market value of the acquirer stock, the acquisition price may change is dependent on the acquirer stock. The acquisition price may change. The answer is false because the adjustment is to stock and a peak price, okay, will remain the same. So it's not if it is the acquirer stock. 40, for business combinations to qualify as three organizations for tax purposes, the acquiring stockholders must receive voting stock of the acquirer. So to qualify as three organizations, the acquiring stockholders must receive common stock of the acquirer. The acquiring stockholders continue to have an indirect ownership interest in the net assets, but may stock 
preferred stock or a non-voting stock qualifies as uh, indirect ownership as well as for the voting common stock. So number 40 is false. 41. There are different required levels of stock ownership in the acquiry for the three different types of reorganizations. Uh, true. One important benefit of a business combination is any operating laws carry forward that might exist and be available to the acquirer. A net operating loss carry forward cannot be acquired. They are only available to the acquirer if the combination qualifies as a non-taxable exchange. So a net operating carry loss over cannot be acquired. They are only available to the acquirer if the combination qualifies as a non-taxable exchange. Now we go to the multiple choice up to number 127. I'll uh, give the letter answers uh, to each of these. Number 43, which of the following types of business combinations typically occurs when management attempts to monopolize. So letter A, horizontal combination. 44, horizontal business combination occurs when one entity purchases which of the following. So letter C. 46, horizontal business combinations help sales increase by all but which of the following? Letter B as in boy, taking control of a distribution system. Taking control of a distribution system. 46, which of the following types of business combinations typically occurs when management is attempting to improve the efficiency of operations uh, vertical. Boy, 47, a vertical combination occurs when one entity acquires another which has the following characteristics. <clears throat> so letter D as in dog. 48. Which of the following is a vertical combination? Letter C. Combination where the two entities have a potential buyer-seller relationship. 48C. 49. Which of the following types of so business combinations typically occurs when management is attempting to diversify, 49 is conglomerate, uh, incidental, peripheral, or shall we say, of little relevance no? in the case of. So number 49, letter C. 50. Management acquires a business in a tangentially related industry to the current business. What form of business combination is accomplished? So the form is still a conglomerate that may uh, have a tangent uh, uh, relationship with the related industry. 51. One reason for conglomerate combination is that management has become more aware that it helps accomplish which of the following. So letter A. It helps increase income stability provided by 
diversifying. That's still conglomerate. 52, business combination that result in one dominant company is uh, that have formed which of the following? B as in boy, monopoly. 53, the business enterprises that enter into a business combination are termed the constituent companies. So letter C, 54. When an offer is made to acquire a company and the acquiry management supports the offer, the offer is friendly takeover. Letter A, 55. A defensive maneuver where a company buys stock from a potential acquirer at a premium over the market price is called which of the following? So defensive maneuver where a company buys stock from a potential acquirer at a premium over the market price is called. Uh, actually, this will uh, answer uh, your question in the case of number... Ano to kailaga? 13. 13. Green mail exists when a company is encouraged to buy a potential acquiry. So the answer to number 55 is letter C. Green mail. Price substantially lower in excess of the prospective acquirer's cost with the stock place in treasury. So we have letter C. 56. The defensive maneuver where a company seeks to be acquired by a company perceived to be a better match than the company making an offer to buy the potential acquiry is called which of the following? B as in boy. White Knight, encouraging a third company more acceptable or to acquire the target company. 56, B as in boy. 57, company A makes a hostile takeover bid for control of company B. In response, company B makes a counter offer to purchase shares from company A's shareholders. Which of the following best describes company B's response? So it's the Pac-Man defense. Uh, takeover of the would-be acquiring company. 58, company A has made an offer to purchase all of the outstanding shares of company B for 10 per share the current market value of the shares. In response to company A's offer, the shareholder of company B were given rights to purchase additional shares at eight per share. Which of the following tactics was employed by company B to prevent company A from acquiring control of company B? So it's the... A uh, poison pill uh, where an, an uh, amendment will be made in the so letter C for number 58. 59. What's the term used for the defensive maneuver where management of a potential acquiry sells desirable assets to reduce the company's value? Sale of the crown jewels is letter A. Uh, 60. Shark repellent is a term for administrative measures that may make a hostile takeover more difficult. Which of the following is not a form of shark repellent? Stag, uh, C. Issue 1 of convertible preferred stock that converts into common stock of the acquirer if a takeover is accomplished. 
So 60C, 61, defensive maneuvers can be internal to the potential acquiry management or stockholders or may involve activities external to the acquiry, which of the following is not an internal defensive maneuver. It's uh, the Pac-Man defense. C, 62, able limited offers to buy shares from the existing shareholders of the company at a premium price. The current management and board of directors of WE have let the WE shareholders know that they do not approve of this. This is an example of letter B as in boy, who still take over. 63. Control over an acquiry can be attained through which of the following? C. Either acquisition of the acquiry assets or stock. 64. In an acquisition of assets, the acquirer must give up which of the following? Uh, the acquirer must give up. Any of the above can be given. So the answer is D as in dog. 65. In an acquisition where there is an exchange of assets, for assets, how does the value of the acquiring net assets change? The acquiring net assets may increase, decrease, or remain the same. 66. In an acquisition where there is an exchange of assets for assets, how does the ownership structure of the acquiring change? There is no change in the acquiring ownership structure. 67. In an acquisition where there is an exchange of assets for assets, how does the ownership structure of the acquirer change? There is no change in the acquirer ownership structure. 68. In an acquisition where there is no, where there is an exchange of stock Acquirer for assets of the acquiry, how does the value of the acquiry net assets change? D as in dog. 69. In an acquisition where there is an exchange of stock uh, for assets, how does the ownership structure of the acquiry change? There is no change. Letter A. In an acquisition where there is an exchange of stock for assets, how does the ownership structure of the acquirer change? In that case, the acquirer becomes a stockholder. So the acquiry company becomes a stockholder of the acquirer. Boy, 71. Com control over acquiring assets is attained in a business combination. Indirect control is attained in which type of exchange? So indirect control through stock for stock. 72. Which of the following? 71C. 72. Which of the following forms of business combination is not subject to laws specific to business combination? So you have your asset for asset acquisition. A. 73. Which of the following is not a true statement with regards to statutory merger? Not a true statement. Uh, the answer is uh, letter C. Not true. The name of the new entity is not the same or as either of the entities. So it's not true. 74. Which of the following is not true with regards to the statutory consolidation form of business combination number 74? Letter C. The net assets of the combining entities 
must be acquired with assets of the new corporation. 75. Uh, following the completion of a business combination in the form of statutory consolidation, what is the balance in the new corporation's retained earnings account? Letter A, the acquirer's retained earnings account balance. 75A, 76, which of the following is not true? With regards to a business combination accomplished in the form of stock acquisition. Not true. Two companies remain in existence after the combination. So not true. Which of the following is not true with regards to business combination? Uh, A is true. B. A parent subsidiary relationship is said to exist is still true. Consolidated financial statements are normally required. True and so letter D. All of the above statements are true. 76. 77. Which of the following contingencies may change the cost of the acquisition? Uh, future acquiry earnings A. 78. To qualify as a reorganization for tax purposes, a business combination must meet which of the following criteria? A. Acquiring stockholders continue as indirect ownership interest. Uh, the acquirer must continue the acquiring business or employ a significant portion of the assets, net assets in an ongoing business. The combination must be for a valid business purpose. All of the above criteria are required for a combination to qualify as a reorganization. 78 dog. 79. Which of the following is not a business combination? B as in boy. 8E, under PFRS3, business combinations, which method must be used to account for business combination? Is it uh, this time letter C, acquisition? 81, after an exchange of shares in a business combination, its group of shareholders held 50% of the voting rights. Which of the following factors should be considered in determining the acquirer? Now we have to determine the acquirer in terms of the composition of the board of directors. Boy, 82. Parents company plans to acquire Ru company. Ru has substantial depreciable assets that have fair values in excess of their book values. Considering only the income tax impact, which of the following statements is true? A. Paris would prefer to purchase Ruth's assets and Ru would prefer to sell its shares to Paris. Uh, letter A. 83. Paris company acquired Drew in a business combination. Drew issued new shares to Paris shareholders in exchange for their outstanding shares. What type of share exchange is this? Number 83 is D. Reverse takeover. 84. Paris company acquired Drew in a business combination. Paris issued new shares to rural shareholders in exchange for their outstanding shares. What type of <coughs> exchange is this? Letter A, direct. 85, uh, we have uh, Ho Limited and He Limited exchange shares in a business combination. After the share exchange, each company held the same number of voting shares. Which of the following statements is true? Letter C, 
a number of factors must be considered to determine which company is the acquirer. 86. How should the transaction cost of issuing shares in an acquisition be recognized? Letter D, deducted from shareholders' equity net of related income tax benefits. 87. How should the cost of issuing debt in acquisition be recognized? Deducted from the value of the debt. 88. How should accounting fees be treated? Letter A. Expense in the period of acquisition. 89. Which of the following is not a reason why a private enterprise may be acquired as a bargain purchase? C. The business only has equity financing and has no debt financing. 89. 90. Which of the following statements about a bargain purchase is true? Assets and liabilities of the acquired company are reported at their fair value. D as in dog. 91. What is the most common valuation method used for intangible assets? Now we have the income based. Uh, valuation method B as in boy 92 uh, how should negative goodwill be shown on the consolidated financial statements of the acquiry uh, we call it goodwill if the consideration is more than the uh, net assets a net identifiable assets of the acquiry we call it goodwill. However, negative goodwill is the reverse. When uh, we were taking uh, the lower accounting subjects, how did we treat negative goodwill? We know that goodwill is an intangible asset. Intangible asset. How do we classify negative goodwill? in uh, financial accounting how do we classify negative goodwill huh? kaya yung mga goodwill intangible asset how about negative goodwill it's the reverse no normally goodwill is a debit it's a debit it's an asset how about in financial accounting how do we treat Negative goodwill. Huh? Negative goodwill. How do we treat negative goodwill? If goodwill is an asset, a positive goodwill is treated as what? In number 92... How should negative goodwill be shown on the consolidated financial statements of the acquirer? As a gain. Anybody who knows? Gain. Huh? As a Normally, gain. negative goodwill is a credit, no? So, is negative goodwill having a similar uh, nature as your uh, bargain purchase. Normally, your bargain purchase is a credit. The bargain purchase being a credit is shown in the box as a gain. Gain, no? So, how about your negative goodwill? How do we treat your uh, negative goodwill in this case? Do we treat it as okay. a liability or we treat it as a gain on the statement of comprehensive income? Actually, it's a credit. It's a credit. So it's a gain. It's the and same uh, we know the that one. your ang imunga bargain uh, purchase bala, it's a gain. 
So does, is it similar to negative goodwill? Is that bargain yes, purchase or that gain similar, no? Pariyulong yes. sila. The, what's important yes, there is you record that as a gain. Next, nine, so number 92A. 93, Ra Company acquired all of Event Limited's common shares. At the date of acquisition, Event had 80,000 of goodwill resulting from its acquisition of Baker Limited a few years ago. At trust date of acquisition, what is the proper treatment of events 80,000 goodwill? So actually the goodwill is not acquired by, uh, by event during this uh, acquisition by Ra, no? Uh, but it was recognized already when uh, event acquired Baker. So there's a third party here. How should the uh, goodwill acquired by Baker or by event from investment in Baker be recognized? Goodwill is not a, an identifiable asset but should be included as part of RAS. What's PPD? What do you mean by uh, uh, PPD here? It's a given. Event goodwill is not an identifiable asset but should be included as part of RAS. What's PPD? I, uh, we have found that in the book, there's one uh, word there, purchase price discrepancy. So it should not be treated as identifiable asset, but should be included as part of purchase price discrepancy. In the records of event, you have it as a goodwill. So number 93C, 94, which of the following does not constitute a business combination under PFRS number three? That's uh, letter B. A corporation enters into a joint venture. Next, number 95, what is a statutory merger? Uh, it's a business combination in which only one company continues. Letter D as in dog. The statutory merger in number 96 is a business combination in which only one of the two companies exists. So letter A. And seven, liabilities assumed in an acquisition will be valued at estimated fair value. 97 is A. 98, in reference to IASB disclosure requirements, which of the following is correct? Notes to the financial statements when accounting corporation must disclose that the business combination was accounted for by so letter C. 99, goodwill arising from business combination is never amortized. So never amortized. Dog, 100. In reference to international accounting for goodwill, which of the following statement is correct? Now we have all of the above are correct. So U.S. companies have complained that past accounting rules for amortizing goodwill place them at a disadvantage in competing against foreign. Some foreign countries permitted the immediate write-off of goodwill. Stockholders' equity and the IASB and FASB are working to eliminate differences in accounting for business combinations. 100 dog, 101. In recording acquisition cost, which of the following procedures is correct? Uh, letter C, 
consulting fees are expensed. Consulting fees are expensed. Uh, letter A, registration costs are expensed and not charged against the fair value of the securities issued. So if you are issuing bonds, your registration costs will be charged to bond issue costs. Uh, number 101C. 102, which of the following statements is incorrect? Dog. A stock acquisition occurs when one corporation pays cash, uh, issues stocks, or issues debt for all or part of the voting stock of another company. And the acquired company dissolves and ceases to exist as a separate entity. So not is incorrect, D as in dog. Which of the following can be used as consideration in a stock acquisition? It may be cash, debt, or stock. So the answer is dog. Uh, Slocum Corporation and Merton Company, both publicly owned companies, are planning a merger with Chocom being the survivor. Which of the following is a requirement for the merger? Letter D, the board directors of both Shocom and Merton must approve the, the merger. Number 105, PFRS3 requires that the business combination be accounted for by using, uh, what's your answer to this? Number 105, hello? C. Letter, letter one, C, C. C letter C, ma'am. PFRS3 requires that all business combination be accounted for using either the acquisition or the pooling of interest methods. Did you, did you find that in PFRS3? Did you find that statement? Why you answered C? Did you find that in PFRS 3? Do we still have pooling of interest? Do we still have pooling of interest? Why naging man? Ha? Sa ginbasa nyo da sa libro, may pooling of interest pa? Why, ma'am? Ha? Oh, di ba? Ay, kumain na ba sa... Why na? Kaya nga, ha? Sa ibang nga authors, why na? Kaysa ng una, pooling of interest kag purchase method. Duwa na sila, pooling of interest. Ang purchase method, amo na ang ginislan nga acquisition method. Kay bisan wala consideration kagin bayad uh, acquired man yapon. Ang term acquisition. So, gani nga, the more appropriate term is acquisition method, not purchase method. But I'm trying to look for, can you still find pooling of interest? Huh? Can you still uh, find pooling of interest? Huh? How many of you have seen pooling of interest in the book? Anybody who has seen pooling of interest, you give us the page. Where can you find pooling of interest method? Is it still applicable? Is it still practiced? Why your answer is C. Either. Either. Ah. Yes? Feeling ko lang mami na basahan ko nga amuna pero do hindi siya sa daya ng libro. <laughs> May na basahan ka nga pooling of interest. However, you have also read that pooling of interest is no longer applicable, but only the acquisition method. Where did you read that? Is that in the provision of PFRS three? Is that found in the book of Dayag? 
Have you found that in the book of Dayag? Ha? Huh? May nakita. Hindi, ma'am, hindi sa libro ni Dayag. Sa libro ni Dayag, may ara wala. Ha? Huh? Sa libro ni Dayag, may pooling of interest. Anybody well, want... Ma'am, hindi na nilagay na ano... Hindi na nilagay na encourage. Anybody was found pulling of interest in the book of Dayag? Ha? May arak gidira? You tell me ah. Ay, basi ako lang yung wala kita. Have you, have you found the term pulling of interest in the book of Dayag? Have you found that? Please tell me if you have found Kay, uh, ano lang kita, sharing? Because in other books, what we have read, that the pooling of interest method is uh, no longer used, but it's more of the acquisition method. Now, if ever you found it in the book of Dayag, is there an illustration about the pooling of interest method? Is there any... Ma'am, uh, wala, wala ma'am gid, ano, may ar, wala gid ma'am like specific provision nga ginahatag sa chapter 1 regarding sa pooling of interest. Pero, amo na, hindi ko gali siya ma'am nabasahan sa libro ma'am, just hanggang search ko sa internet. Um, ano, ang sa IFRS 3 nga daan ma'am, di ba it is generally for business combinations. It does not necessarily tell na business combinations lang siya for asset acquisition, stock acquisition. Bale, business combinations under common control nga daan ma'am di ba ano siya for pooling of interest method ang gamit so amo na ma'am nga ginsabat ko letter C because business combinations in general ang iya nga question and business combination under common control may ara na may ara nga, nga pooling of interest uh, there is pooling of interest method used no uh, for that matter however at present uh, it's not the more uh, applicable method but maybe for the sake that uh, there is uh, an option to use the method nga pooling of interest though it's uh, not illustrated in um, anymore in the book there is no more illustration well whatever book you are using there is no more illustration about the pooling of interest but only uh, stating that the only method applicable is the acquisition method. However, based on the statements, kayang atun diri is uh, PFRS 3 mentioning under this PFRS, then all business combinations be accounted for. It's a general statement which may allow the use of pooling of interest however you do not you you do not involve any illustrative problem with regards to pooling of interest but it's still more of the acquisition method so but only for the sake of the provisions of uh, pfrs number three and in conformity with uh, those statements under business combination, that's why we answer letter C. Kay ang, uh, ang problem sini is when you take the board exam. And uh, it's a multiple choice question. Uh, according to Dayag Silingya, it's a multiple choice question that's very, very important. Ang ang troll false na iya only for the sake of uh, of uh, determining whether the students uh, they really understand the statements that they have read. But sitting in the board exam, you have to prioritize multiple choice. So I have to prioritize multiple choice during the last. Uh, uh, periodic, no? May periodic pa kita nga, nga isa, may periodic pagid nga sa October 6. So, dito na lang kuma 
dugang sang multiple choice. Okay, so the answer is letter C. Uh, it's either. The word is either. Uh, 106. Under the acquisition method, if the fair value of identifiable net assets exceed the value implied by the purchase price of the acquired company, the excess should be letter D as in dog allocated to reduce any previously recorded goodwill on the seller's books and classify any remainder as an ordinary gain. I think we have already illustrated this in uh, our module number two when uh, we have adjustments to the goodwill account when later the PPE like building account was uh, adjusted in terms of the fair market value. So we have to allocate part of this adjustment to goodwill and it's only the balance that will be credited to gain. So number 106 dog, 107, PFRS 3 requires that the acquirer disclose each of the following for each material business combination, so 107, uh, D as in dog. 108, when the acquisition price of an acquired firm is less than the fair value of the identifiable net assets, all of the following are recorded at fair value except uh, assumed liabilities, current assets, long-lived assets, each of the above is recorded at fair value. So, dog 109. Under PFRS 3, both direct and indirect costs are expense. Uh, boy, 110. Uh, a business combination is accounted for properly as an acquisition. Which of the following expenses? related to effect, affecting the business combination should enter into the determination of net income of the combined corporation for the period in which the expenses are incurred. So security issue cost, we do not include it in the determination of income because this is debited to API. Overhead allocated to the merger, yes. So letter C, 410. And 11, the business combination, which of the following costs are assigned to the valuation of the security? Professional or consulting fees, no. Security issue cost, yes. So letter C, 112. Parental company and sub-company were combined in an acquisition transaction, Parental was able to acquire sub at a bargain price. The sum of the fair value of the identifiable asset acquired, less the value of liabilities assumed, exceeded the cost to Parental. After eliminating previously reported goodwill, there was still some negative goodwill. Proper accounting treatment by Parental is to report the amount as an ordinary gain. So letter C. With an acquisition, direct and indirect expenses are expense. Letter A. 114. A business combination accounted for as an acquisition. How should the excess of fair value of net assets acquired over the consideration paid be treated? D, recorded as an ordinary gain. 115, if the value implied by the purchase price of an acquired company exceeds the fair value of identifiable net assets, the excess should be allocated to goodwill. Dog. 116, P company issued 5,000 shares of its common stock valued at 200,000 to the former shareholders of S Company uh, two years after S Company was acquired in an all-stock transaction. 
the additional shares were issued because P company agreed to issue additional shares of common if the average post combination earnings over the next two years exceeded 500,000. P company will treat the issuance of additional shares as an increase in letter C, paid in capital. 117, the fair value of assets and liabilities of the acquired entity is to be reflected in the financial statements of the combined entity. When the acquisition takes place over a period of time, rather than all at once, at what time is the fair value of the assets and liabilities of the acquired entity determined? So, boy, the date the acquirer obtains control of the acquiry. B as in boy, 118. Under PFR is 3, what value of the assets and liabilities is reflected in the financial statements of the acquisition date of a business combination boy? 119. What is the appropriate accounting treatment for the value assigned to in process uh, research and development acquired in a business combination? So your IPRD, that's your uh, account, uh, capitalized as an asset. 120. An acquired entity is a long term operating lease for an office building used for central management. The terms of the lease are very favorable relative to current market rates. However, the lease prohibits subleasing or any other transfer of rights. In its financial statements, the acquiring firm should report the value assigned to the lease contract as D, an intangible asset under the contractual legal criteria. 221. Under PFRS 3, when is again recognized in consolidating financial statements? A, when any bargain purchase is created. Under 22, Company B acquired net assets of Company S in exchange for cash. The acquisition price exceeds the fair value of the net assets acquired. How should Company B determine the amounts to be reported as part of property, plant, and equipment and long-term debt? So letter B, fair value and fair value. Boy, under 23, goodwill represents the excess of cost of an acquisition over the sum of the fair values assigned to tangible and identifiable intangible assets acquired, less liabilities assumed. So letter B as in boy. Under 24, when an acquisition of another company occurs, IASB recommends disclosing all of the following except C, results of operations for the current period if both companies had remained separate. 125, separately identified intangible assets are accounted for by amortizing based upon a pattern that reflects the benefits conveyed by the asset. Letter B as in boy. 126, acquisition costs such as the fees of accountants and lawyers that were necessary to negotiate and consummate the purchase are expense c 127 which of the following income factors should not be factored into an estimation of goodwill extraordinary items that's letter c okay now will you go to problem number one uh, we will take up problems one and three. So at least uh, this will reduce. Okay, problems numbers one and three. Four, statutory uh, merger and consolidation. And then determining goodwill and bargain purchase gain.
Record na, record na na there. Record, okay? So, we now go to uh, problem number one, everybody. Will you open now to problem number one? And then we move on to problem number three. Okay? Problem number one, statutory merger versus stock acquisition. Uh, valuation of assets and liabilities acquired stock acquisition goodwill stock price contingency below is the condensed balance sheet of sons incorporated along with the estimates of fair values uh, pap incorporated is planning to acquire sons by issuing 100,000 shares of its one peso par value of common stock market value of eight per share and exchange for all the outstanding common stock of sons pap also guarantees the value of the shares issued the expected present value of this stock price contingency is two hundred thousand. now this is with regards to contingent consideration uh, you may refer to page 34 of uh, the book for the discussions of contingent consideration which may be classified as a liability or an equity now in short when we involve contingent consideration it will be included among the liabilities if it is to be paid in cash or in another assets however if the company will be issuing additional shares then the contingent consideration will be included among the equities will be included among the equities now please uh, read first the problem before we go on for contingent consideration Okay, so required in uh, requirement number one, statutory merger, prepare PAP's uh, acquirer, acquirer, acquiring entries to record the acquisition. And in number two, we have to record the stock acquisition, which uh, actually are explained in uh, uh, chapters two to five. But anyway, we already have some previous entries about, the, about this. Now, uh, condensed balance sheet of Sons Incorporated along with estimated fair values. PAP Incorporated is planning to acquire Sons by issuing 100,000 shares of its one peso par value common. The market value is eight, though the par is only one peso. In exchange 
for all of the outstanding common stock of SANS. PAP also guarantees the value of shares issued. The expected present value of this stock price contingency is 200,000. So we are now including your stock contingent consideration. And take note that we are now dealing in number one with a statutory merger. So we have now the book values and the fair values of uh, the uh, records of uh, PAP no, or uh, we have SANS. And uh, we have now the current assets, plant, liabilities, common stock, additional paid in capital, and retained earnings with the total liabilities. Now, let's take up in the books of the acquirer as required. Prepare entries in the books of the acquirer who is perhaps uh, now to record the acquisition. So we now prepare the entries in the books of PAPS. PAPS is the acquirer or the acquiring company. First, we debit uh, current assets. So debit current assets for 350000 Current assets, 350000 Debit to plant assets, 810000 Then, we debit to goodwill. We debit to goodwill. The amount of goodwill is 290000 We are going to compute that uh, after this entry. So anyway, just fill up goodwill of 290000 then credit liabilities at uh, fair value, 450,000 liabilities. Credit common stock, one peso par. Taliin gida, by somebody is calling. Ano dai? Ha? So now fill up goodwill in the amount of 290,000 which we are going to compute after then credit to liabilities credit to liabilities at fair value 450,000 then also credit to common stock, 100,000 shares at one. One is the par value, so credit 100,000. Then credit additional paid-in capital or share premium. Credit additional paid-in capital or share premium. That is seven times 100,000. Seven times 100,000. Or... 700,000 and credit to APIC, APIC Diapon, additional paid in capital, stock contingent consideration. Stock contingent consideration. That's the added account that we have arising from uh, contingent consideration. So credit APIC, stock contingent consideration. The amount of 200,000 is given. I'll repeat the entry in the books of PAPS. PAPS is the acquiring company. So the entry is debit, current assets 350,000, plant assets 810,000, goodwill 290,000, credit to liabilities 450,000, common stock. 100,000, that's 100,000 times 1. Then credit additional paid in capital from share premium, that's 7 times 100,000. By the way, 7 is the difference between 8 minus 1. So 7 times 100,000. 
credit seven hundred thousand and credit apik for the stock contingent consideration. Stock contingent consideration for two hundred thousand. Now take note if the debit side will tally with the credit side. You add the debits, add the credits. Find out if the debits tally with the credits total. Okay, na. So we have this entry for uh, the books of pubs. Okay. Now let's try to determine goodwill. Uh, we have already debited to goodwill for. 290,000. Now, how did we arrive at that amount? The common stock is 100,000 shares times 8. So, 800,000. 100,000 shares times 8. Then, expected uh, probability of present value of stock price contingency. So, you have now your uh, stock price contingency it's uh, a probable uh, stock price contingency you are given the amount of 200,000 you are given the amount of 200,000 so we now have expected probability of the present value of the stock price contingency for 200,000 800,000, the market value of the common stock, add 200,000, so we now get 1 million, the consideration transferred. The consideration transferred 1 million. Then from this, we did that, the fair market value of the assets and liabilities acquired. Did that, the fair market value of the assets and the liabilities acquired. So we have current assets, 350,000. Plant assets, 810,000. So 350,000 and 810,000. Then we did the liabilities of 450,000. Did the liabilities of 450,000. The net amount is 710,000. So 350 add 810 minus 450. The difference is 710,000. 1 million minus 710,000. The excess of the consideration over the net assets is 290,000. That's now your uh, goodwill. It's positive goodwill. In other words, why we have to debit goodwill. We debited goodwill in the amount of 290,000. By the way, can you, deb can you uh, make the debits and the credits equal in your entry? Hello? Are yes, your debit, yes. debit total equal to the yes, credit total, correct? Oh, sige. Now, second request. Yes, yes. it is equal. Sige, patahan. Di tanay magpuli, ah. Kay... <laughs> sige lang, wala man... Karun pa ta, magutom, karun pa. Dali lang, Gid. Kay parang... <laughs> stock acquisition. That's now your second requirement. Prepare the entries in the box of PAPS. So the entry now is uh, debit to books of pubs. Debit investment in subsidiary, investment in subsidiary for one million, investment in subsidiary for one million, credit common stock at par. Credit common stock at par, 100,000. Credit a pick for the share premium, 700,000. Credit a pick for the share premium, 700,000. 
and also credit APIC for the stock contingent consideration. And also credit APIC for the stock contingent consideration. So we have the amount of 200,000. So debit investment in subsidiary 1 million credits are common stock 100,000 share APIC 700,000 for the share premium and APIC for the stock contingent consideration 200,000. Okay, so we now have to recognize our computations and determine the amount of goodwill. Okay, compute uh, the fair value of the subsidiary. The fair value of the subsidiary. Consideration transferred. Consideration transferred is equal to common stock market value. Common stock market value, 800,000. Common stock market value, 800,000. Uh, stock price contingency. Stock price contingency, 200,000. Stock price contingency, 200,000. So you get 1 million. That's the fair value of the subsidiary. You get 1 million. That's the fair value of the subsidiary. Okay? 1 million is the fair value of the subsidiary. Then from that, we deduct the book value of the shareholders' equity of the subsidiary. We deduct the book value of the shareholders' equity of the subsidiary, including common stock, common stock, 50,000, common stock, 50,000, a peak share premium, a peak share premium for the amount of 170,000 given in a class. A peak share premium, 170,000 and the, the retained earnings and the retained earnings of 400,000. So the book value of the shareholders equity of the subsidiary is or has a total of 620,000. 620,000. 1 million minus 620,000. The allocated excess is 380,000. The allocated excess is 380,000. Then from the allocated excess, we are going to the add or deduct. Add or deduct, so add and then deduct, open, close, parenthesis, Did add, deduct. Uh, first, uh, we have to add or deduct the following. Decrease in current assets. Decrease in current assets. 350 minus 380, negative. Decrease in current assets, 350 being the fair value, the carrying amount is 380. So we have 30,000, that's the decrease. Inside the parentheses, you have deduct. Next, increase in plant assets. Increase in plant assets, the amount of 70,000. Increase in plant assets, 810 minus 407, 810 minus 740, 810 minus 740. So you have the amount of 70,000. 810 minus 740 or 70,000. We add because it's an increase. The last is decrease in liabilities. Decrease in liabilities. 450 minus 500,000. 450 minus 500,000. 
500,000. It's a decrease. So we have to add 50,000. So 30,000 deduct, 70,000 add, 50,000 add. So we now get the net amount of 90,000. 90,000 add deduct. So now we are going to add 90,000. 380 as the allocated excess minus 90. 380 minus 90, that gives us the positive excess similar to the first uh, requirement with a merger. This time, we have a goodwill, a positive goodwill equal to 290,000. Okay? So we are illustrating here a uh, merger and at the same time stock acquisition. Right, you go to problem three. This is quite a long problem. Problem three. But I hope we can uh, finish before one o'clock. Okay, before one o'clock we can finish. So we have now problem number three with four uh, requirements, with four requirements, but with sub requirements. Okay, so will you now refer to problem number three for the following requirements? Okay. In problem number three, this relates to assets and liabilities uh, leading us to acquired goodwill and as well as bargain purchase gain. Then contingent consideration and the changes. So it is now involving various items. Okay, so we now have two columns. One is pop company and the other one is uh sequel company we are now given the book values in the book sub pop uh, being the acquiring company and in the books of sequel company uh, the subsidiary or the acquired company now given the book values and the market values of the current assets investments land buildings equipment total assets then we have the current liabilities, long-term liabilities, and now we have the common stock, additional paid in capital, retained earnings, and the total liabilities and stockholders' equity of the acquired and the acquiring company. Okay. In addition to the above, SQL company has identifiable intangibles, valued uh, at 5 million, not recognized on its books, but appropriately capitalized by PAP. So the amount of 5 million. January 1, 20X, uh, 20X6, PAP issues 400,000 shares of its stock with a par value of 10 per share and a market value of 100. So take note, par is 10, market value is 100. To acquire SQL companies' assets and liabilities, SEC registration fees are 1,100,000 paid in cash. Now, for requirement E number one, compute for the following. One, total assets, total liabilities, APIC for the share premium, retained earnings for the profit or loss, and the stockholders, shareholders, equity. So we have now requirement number one with letters A to E. First, we compute for the total assets. What is the total assets of PAP? Total assets of PAP is given uh, 81 million minus the registration fee paid of 1,100,000. So the total assets of PAP is 79,900,000. C call 
the assets of SQL, we now uh, enumerate cash. The market value is 1.5 million. Then we have investments, 500,000. We have uh, land of 6 million, 16 million of buildings at net. 2 million of equipment of uh, C call, and then we did that. Uh, we still have to add goodwill. This was already uh, stated that this was recognized by PAP. So, goodwill of uh, 5 million, that's now the uh, initial goodwill uh, given, and we are going to add the goodwill now of. 22,500,000. million five hundred thousand. which we are going to have later in our journal entry. So repeat, PAP, total assets, 79,900,000. C-call, the total assets of C-call is 53,500,000. Hello, are you following? Are you still there? Are you following? Yes. That's it. Yes. That's it. That's it. That's it, man, ma'am. Ah, muna kung ginagutom ako. That's it. But anyway, I'll slow down. The what? Number one requirement is to determine the total assets. Okay. The total assets now is composed of the assets of PAP and of C call. So the assets of PAP are the following. 81 million, that's your 81 million given. And we deduct 1 million 100,000. So 81 million minus 1 million 100,000. So the difference Two. is 79 million 900,000. 79,900,000 for the total assets of PAP. Then for the assets of SQL, we add 1,500,000 current assets. 1,500,000 current assets. Add investments, 500,000. Add land, 6 million. Add buildings, 16 million. Add equipment, 2 million. Then we still add the initial goodwill of 5 million. And add 22 million 500,000. And add 22 million. 500,000 for the present goodwill that we are going to uh, determine in our entry afterwards. So you first include it. We, I will explain that later. So the goodwill of 22,500,000. Now will you add the assets of SQL? Please add the assets of SQL. 53,500,000. La? 53,500,000, ma'am. Okay, correct. Total assets of SQL, 53,500,000. We add it to the total assets of PAP, 79,900,000. So the total assets is 133,400,000. 100 133,400,000. So we will explain 22,500,000 afterwards. Total assets 133,400,000. That's the total assets as required in letter A. Then in letter B, the required amount is for total liabilities. Total liabilities. Okay? 
the total liabilities of PAP is equal to current liabilities, 4 million, long-term liabilities, 20 million. 4 million and 20 million. So total liabilities of PAP, 24 million. For C call, total liabilities, 1,500,000 plus 12 million. So total liability sub PAP, 24 million. Total liability sub C call, 13 million. 500,000. Kwa Total liabilities, 37 million, 500,000. Total liabilities, 37 million, 500,000. That's the total liabilities. Okay? Catch up. Next, see. Uh -huh. <laughs> Okay lang, catch up ka mo? Catch up man, catch up. Catch up, o oh, sige. <laughs> Next, letter C. Additional paid in capital for the share premium. Additional paid in capital for the share premium. C, requirement C. Now we begin with PAP. We begin with PAP. Okay, the amount of uh, common stock of PAP, no? But anyway, the requirement for letter C is additional paid-in capital. For PAP, we begin with 40 million. 40 million. 40 million plus, 40 million plus, Okay, the result of multiplying 90 by 400,000 shares. 26 million. So, 90. Where did I get 90? 100 minus 10. So, 90 times 400,000 is 36 million. Is 36 million. Minus 1,100,000. Minus 1,100,000. Minus 1,100,000. Okay? So, uh, we have now a pick. Pops. Pop. 40 million. Plus third six million minus one million one hundred thousand. So how much is the apic of pop? Uh, seventy four million nine hundred thousand. That's the apic of pop. Did you get it? Huh? Yes, ma'am. Forty million plus third six million minus one million one hundred thousand. So you get 74 million 900,000. 74 million 900,000. That is the apic of PAP. Okay? The apic of PAP is 74 million 900,000. But we have zero for C call. We have zero for C call. Okay? So the APIC total is 74,900,000. 74,900,000. That's the APIC total. Share premium. Next, we go to letter D. Retained earnings or the accumulated profit or loss. Retained earnings or the accumulated profit or loss. So for PAP, 12 million. For PAP, 12 million. And for CCOL, zero. 
for C call zero. So box 12 million and C call zero. So the total retained earnings is 12 million. And the last, in number one, letter E, compute for the stockholders' equity. The stockholders' equity. For the stockholders' equity now, for PAP, we have 5 million given, 5 million given, plus 4 million. 4 million is the result of multiplying Par of 10 by 400,000. Par of 10 by 400,000. So we have 4 million. Add it to 5 million. The total common stock is 9 million. Only for pop. Question letter E is shareholders equity. So computing for shareholders equity. We have common stock of 9,000 as part of letter E. Then we add APIC in letter C, 74,900,000, 74,900,000, and letter D for retained earnings for 12,000. Repeat. Common stock, 9 million. A pick in letter C, 74,900,000. Retained earnings in letter D, 95 million or 12 million. So the total is 95,900,000. 95,900,000. That is in your requirement letter E for your uh, shareholders' equity. So these are requirements to number one. Requirement number two, assume PAP issued 90,000 shares. Okay. But anyway, before we go to requirement number two, now let's prepare the journal entry for the above. So what will be your journal entry? Okay, everybody, please follow. Are you still there? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Let's eat yes, lunch uh, together at 1 o'clock. Okay. <laughs> entry, journal entry. Debit, current assets. Current assets, 1.5 million. Current assets, 1.5 million. Next, debit to investments, 500,000. So debit current assets, 1.5 million. Debit to investments, 500,000. Debit land, 6 million. Debit buildings, 16 million debit equipment 2 million so repeat debit current assets 1 million 500,000 debit investments 500,000 debit land 6 million debit building 16 million debit equipment 2 million debit identifiable intangibles 5 million and the uh, debit goodwill okay debit goodwill 22 million 500,000 debit goodwill 22 million 500,000 credit current liabilities 1 million 500,000 credit current liabilities 1,500,000. Credit long-term liabilities, 12 million. Credit long-term liabilities, 12 million. Credit common stock. Credit common stock, 
4 million and credit additional paid in capital and credit additional paid in capital for 36 million for additional paid in capital for 36 million 36 million i'll repeat debit current assets 1 million 500,000 debit investments 500,000 debit land 6 million debit building 16 million debit equipment 2 million debit identifiable intangibles 5 million debit goodwill 22 million 500,000 credit current liabilities 1.5 million credit long term liabilities for 12 million credit to common stock for 4 million and then credit additional paid in capital for 36 million that's taken by multiplying 90 by 400,000 so that's the entry prepared i hope the debits now tallies with the credits for the entries for uh, the assets the liabilities and the capital of uh, we have now the acquired company c call company now how do we determine the goodwill how do we determine the goodwill the goodwill is computed as follows consideration transferred consideration transferred 400,000 times 100 400,000 times 100 so that's 40 million consideration transferred 400,000 times 10 440 million we deduct the market value of assets and liabilities acquired. We deduct the market value of assets and liabilities acquired. Deduct the market value of assets and liabilities acquired. First, current assets. Current assets. 500, uh, 1,500,000 current assets next investments 500,000 credit uh, we have land 6 million building 16 million equipment 2 million identifiable intangibles 5 million okay then we did the current liabilities 1.5 million current liabilities 1 million 500,000 deduct and also deduct long-term liabilities 12 million long-term liabilities 12 million so the net market value of assets and liabilities how much please uh, compute Seventeen million five hundred thousand, ma'am okay 17 million five hundred thousand that's your net assets at market value the difference between your uh, assets including the identifiable goodwill and the liabilities so you have now 17 million five hundred thousand and the difference is the goodwill that we have already debited in our entry so goodwill is 22 million five hundred thousand goodwill is 22 million Five hundred thousand. Everybody, did you get the amount? 
Yes, ma'am. Okay, goodwill, 22 million 500,000. And by the way, we have another entry to record the issue, uh, stock issuance cost. So aside from the entry that we have above, we have the second entry to record stock issuance cost, debit, share issue cost. Debit share issue cost that we will finally debit to APIC. Share issue cost that we will finally debit to APIC and credit cash. And credit cash. That's the main reason why the cash amount of PAP is reduced by 1.1 million. So debit share issue cost or debit to APIC, 1.1 million, and credit to cash for 1.1 million. So actually, we got two entries in uh, requirement number one. We got two entries. So what is requirement number one? Uh, determine the following items. So we have... We have already determined A up to A. A in requirement, uh, I mean, uh, requirement number one, asking for A to A. Number two, assume PAP issued 90,000 shares of stock at a market value of 100 per share with contingent cash consideration amounted to 500,000, that is present obligation and reliably measurable expected present value of earn out agreement of 200,000 and probability present value of stock price contingency agreement of 300,000. The following out of pocket costs in relation to acquisition are as follows. So you are now given the fees, uh, legal, brokers, accountants fee, other direct costs, internal secretarial generated expense, documentary sum tax, SEC registration, printing costs, and stock exchange listing fee. Now, some of these will be charged to uh, retained earnings and some of these will be charged to uh, pay. Okay? The following out-of-pocket costs in relation to acquisition. Okay. So determine total assets, total liabilities, APIC share premium, retained earnings, and shareholders equity. So for number two, we are going to determine number one, total assets. Now, how much is the total assets first of PAP? PAP, the total assets is 81 million. 81 million, uh, that's 81 million given. 81 million. And then we are going to deduct the out-of-pocket cost. Out-of-pocket cost, if you add from legal fees to stock exchange lifting fee, the total is 540000 So you add 80, 40, 170, 60, that's 540. Okay? So your total uh, for PAP is 81 million minus 540000 81 million minus 540,000. So the balance for PAPS is 80 million 460,000. 80 million 460,000. Assets ni PAP. Ang kay Sikol, Sikol, 1 million 500,000 for current assets. Investments, 500,000. Then land, 6 million. Building, 16 million. 2 million for equipment. 
and we add the identifiable goodwill of 5 million. We add the identifiable goodwill of 5 million. So the total assets of PAC is 31 million. 31 million. The total assets of PAC is 80 million. 460,000 and that of C call is 31 million. So the total assets is 111,460,000 total assets. So letter A. Then letter B, the total liabilities for PAP, we have 4 million and uh, 20 million. For PAP, the total liabilities, 4 million and 20 million plus the 200,000, which is the expected present value of earn out agreement of 200,000. That's char chargeable to liability. So liabilities of SQL is 31 million. I hope you get the amount. 1.5 million, 500,000, 6 million, 16 million, 2 million, plus 5 million, total of 31 million. Total assets ni PAP and SQL, 111 million, 460,000. Ang liabilities ni PAP, 24 million 200,000 ang kay si call 1 million 500,000 plus 12 million so 13 million 500,000 the total liabilities of public si call is 37 million 700,000 37 million 700,000 then for the, uh, letter C, additional paid-in capital or the share premium. Let's begin with PAP. A peak of PAP, 40 million. Then we add uh, 90,000 shares. We have the total of uh, 100 minus 10 is equal to uh, 100 minus 10 is 90 times 90,000 shares. So that's 8,100,000. We add 40 million. So the total is 48,100,000. Then we add 300,000 which is given to be the stock price contingency present value of 300,000. So we get 48,400,000. Apik ini ha? Apik ni pap. Then we are going to deduct from Apik the 20 million Na documentary stamp tax, 20 million, and we further deduct the 90,000 SEC registration fee and the 50,000 uh, printing cost. The three are chargeable as stock issuance cost. Stock issuance cost, the total is 160. 160,000. So 48 million 400,000 minus 160,000. The APIC of PAP is 48 million 240,000. 48 million 200,000. Ano ganin ang inclusion ng 160,000? Ano? Ano ang inclusion sa 160,000? 160,000 includes the documentary stamp tax on the new shares, 20,000. SEC registration fee of issued shares, 90,000. 
printing cost of share certificates, 50,000. The total is 160,000. Classified as stock issuance cost that we debit. Hindi ano ma'am. Okay? We debit that to Hindi dala ang ano ma'am. Ang stock exchange listing fee. Ang ano? Ang stock exchange listing fee ma'am. Hindi siya dala. Ano? We charge that to retained earnings. Actually, it's just an ordinary expense. But uh, since the books are already closed, then we may debit or we debit that to retained earnings together with the other costs. So we only have three for the stock issuance cost. So what is now the difference? With PAP, ang iyang apik 48,200,000. Forty thousand. Okay. Now for letter D, retained earnings, accumulated profit or loss. So the retained earnings now is the retained earnings uh, balance of PAP initially twelve million. Initially twelve million. Then we are going to deduct the following expenses. Finally, close to retained earnings. We now have legal fees, 80 million, uh, 80,000. So 12 million minus 80,000 minus 40,000 minus 100,000 minus 70,000 minus 60,000 and minus. 30,000. So these are the deductions. 12 million minus 80,000, 40,000, 100,000, 70,000, 60,000, and 30,000. So we now get the total and add 8 million. That is your negative goodwill. That's your gain that we are going to compute at the bottom. So I'll repeat, 12 million, we deduct the expenses, and then we add 8 million, that is the gain on acquisition that we will compute at the bottom. So the total APIC of PAP in letter C requirement, the total APIC of PAP is... Uh, 48,240,000. In letter D, the retained earnings of PAP is 19,620,000. 19,620,000. That's the retained earnings of PAP. And for the last, stockholders, shareholders' equity, for shareholders' equity, the common stock of PAP is initially uh, 5 million, initially 5 million, and then we add 900,000. 900,000 pertaining to the 90,000 shares uh, issued, so the par of 10, so that's 900,000. So that's for the common stock in the books of PAP. 5,900,000. Then we add a peak, 48,240,000. 48, 48,240,000. The a peak as computed in letter C and the retained earnings in letter D, 19,620,000. So the total is... 73,760,000. 73,760,000. That's for the stockholders' equity of uh, PAP. Okay. Now, let us compute for the 8 million nga gain. As we have already included that in our 
retained earnings. Let's compute for 8 million. Uh, okay, start. Consideration transferred. Consideration transferred. Shares. 90 million times 100. Shares. 90 million times 100. So you get 9 million. Shares. 90 million times 100. You get 9 million. Then we add present value of contingent consideration. Present value of contingent consideration for 200,000. Present value of contingent consideration for 200,000. Then we add present value of stock price contingency. Kaya ang 200,000 is cash contingent consideration while the 300,000 is stock price contingency. So I'll repeat, consideration transferred, shares 90,000 times 100, 9 million. Present value of cash contingent consideration, 200,000. Present value of stock price contingency, 300,000. So the consideration transferred is 9,500,000 Then we are going to deduct the uh, market value of assets and liabilities acquired. So then net amount. Market value of assets and liabilities acquired at net. Current assets, 1.5 million. Investments, 500,000. Land, 6 million. Building, 16 million. Equipment, 2 million. Identifiable intangibles, 5 million. Current liabilities, 1,500,000. Long term liabilities, one, uh, 12 million. 12 million. So again, the net uh, market value of assets and liabilities acquired, 17,500,000. 17,500,000, which is greater than the consideration transferred. Which is greater than the consideration transferred of 9,500,000. So the difference now is a negative excess. That's the gain on acquisition. The difference Pam, is, Pam. yes, yes. Pam, ang kagina, di ba ma'am, um, 200,000 kag 300,000 ang consideration. Bali, uh, nga awala again dala ang contingent cash consideration nga 500,000. Ang contingent uh, cash, so bin-include ta ang kwan lang, 200 lang. Kaya mo na ang expected present value. Kaya ang total ya, 500 mo, that's the present obligation and reliably uh, matured. So okay. ang expected na present value of burnout agreement, amo na ang 200,000 lang. Ang imo nga contingent cash consideration ng 500,000, we just recognize the cash contingent consideration of 200,000. Amuna ang reliably measured na 200, which I think is part of 500. So, bali ang 200 lang ang ginkuha ka. So, 
negative ang aton nga difference. It's a gain of 8 million. So that explains the 8 million that we have in our retained earnings. Okay, na? okay we are through with requirement number two. Hello, you're still there. Number three. Anyway, gamay na lang. We have numbers three and four. Okay? So in number three, now assume that PAP issues 100,000 shares for all SQL shares as in requirement one above. And PAP agrees to pay cash to source previous owners. As he calls me, nagsalat lang ni. If the combined earnings of PAP and SQL exceed a certain threshold over the next two years, the expected present value of the earnings contingency is eight million. Determine the amount of the goodwill or the bargain purchase gain or gain on acquisition. So we have now for number three, we begin with consideration transferred shares 100,000 times 100 100,000 times 100 so 10 million estimated liability for contingent consideration 8 million nag 8 million na niya so the total consideration transferred is 18 million and then we deduct the same net assets of 17.5 million you know the 17.5 million above so 10 million at 8 million we now get the total of 18 million that's the net market value then from 18 million, we deduct 17 million 500,000. 17 million 500,000. The one that we have computed above. Okay? So assets minus liabilities. 17 million 500,000. The difference is 500,000. That's your goodwill. Positive goodwill. Positive goodwill. Okay? Now, number four requirement. Assume the same facts as in requirement number three. Before the contingency period is over, the estimated value of the earnings contingency declines to 7 million eight hundred thousand repair pops and three to reflect the change in the value of earnings contingency if letter a the value decline occurs within the measurement period normally we have learned in module number two that the, the measurement period is only good for one year, no? So, mulang na ang limit sa measurement period. So, what if in letter B, the value decline is due to events occurring subsequent to acquisition period? So, what are the entries in relation to number three? And requirement number four, eight million. Amo na ang aton ng eight million nga gain, goodwill, no? A negative goodwill. We have eight million. Then, in the problem number four, it stated that there's a decline in value. So we now get the difference of two hundred thousand. 8 million in uh, the case of number one, kay Hambalya, uh, but it's still in requirement number three. Assume the same facts in requirement number three. Before the contingency period is over, 
the estimated value of the earnings contingency declines to 7.8 million. Prepare the entry to reflect the change in the value of the earnings. So we now debit if it is in letter A within the measurement period. We now debit estimated liability for contingent uh, consideration. Estimated liability for contingent consideration. If it is within the measurement period, 200,000. And we now credit to goodwill. And we credit to goodwill. Okay. In letter A. Now we have rules regarding the preparation of entries within and outside the measurement period. If in letter B, it's beyond the measurement period, sub we have this decline is due to events subsequent. So we finally debit estimated liability for contingent consideration and credit gain on acquisition. And credit gain on acquisition. That's equal to 200,000. Uh, 200,000. You finally credit that to retained earnings. You finally credit that to retained earnings. Now, I will be, uh, anyway, I'll give you the solutions to all the remaining problems. Uh, but, try nyo anay nga i, try nyo anay nga i and sila para nga daw at least may may ano man ka mo, may achievement man ka mo if you get the answers, no? So, your assignments for yourselves is only the multiple choice problems. You work on the multiple choice problems. Umpire kami na sa BAT, ma'am. Ha? Tagaan mo man kami, ma'am, sa BAT, sa multiple choice, ma'am. Oo, yeah. Yes. Pero atin mo, para nga daw may para nga daw may accomplishment ka man, you try answering the multiple choice problems. So when I will give you the letter answers, at least uh, you Kat will be lang. confident na may answers ka mo. I will give Kaya you the, <laughs> I will give you only the letter answers tomorrow. But for the straight problems, I will uh, print that in the I will print that in the canvas. Okay? So, uh, pulit na ta, do gutom na ta, do... Yes. Yeah. 9, 9, 10, 11, 12, pila to ka oras? Almost. Apat! Okay. So, anyway, uh, please uh, do your assignment. Tomorrow, we will be working on Module number three. You know, you the fact that you solve the problems, even if this will not be checked, at least you will be confident that during the test, you already have an initial capital. Okay, so God bless everyone. See you tomorrow. Let's Bye, ma. Have our lunch. Okay, Bye, ma. Na. Oh, thank you for attending, uh, Mr. Bundo. You are yes, now uh, <laughs> attending the class which... Okay, so bye-bye. Bye, ma'am. Bye, ma'am. Ma Thank you, ma'am. Bye, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Bye, ma'am. Tomorrow naman.